Well, it is week nine, and uh, <clears throat> just about game day. This is Saturday, November 1st. My goodness, the first day of November. Where has 2014 gone? <laughs> Seems like only yesterday um, we're uh, ringing in the new year, and now it's already November. But uh, anyhow, it is November 1st, and um, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, the Eagles will travel to Houston. Well, they'll, they'll be playing Houston. They're, they're already in Houston now, I'm sure. But they'll be playing the Houston Texans um, in Houston. And uh, the Eagles, of course, coming off of the 24-20 loss to the Arizona Cardinals in Arizona. Yes, they still haven't won at University of Phoenix Stadium. But they are coming off that tough loss um, at Arizona. And now will be back on the road against the Houston Texans. And uh, the Eagles are now 5-2, and two, of course. The Texans come in at 4-4, four and four, 500. They've been kind of up and down. Uh, I believe they, they uh, coming off a win after, you know, a few losses in a row there. The Eagles, of course, had won two in a row. Then off the bye week, they lost. So coming off that loss. Um, so a, a couple things about the, about the game. The, uh, the Eagles... Um, uh, Definitely, definitely have some issues in the red zone scoring touchdowns, and this this has been a problem of theirs for quite a number of years. Uh, well, well, last year they were okay; they were pretty good, I think. Last year they were they were decent, I should say. But part of the reason is because they had a really good running game last year, and this year they really haven't gotten off the gotten gotten their running game in gear. Really, <clears throat> aside from that game against the Giants right before the bye, the Eagles' running game has been very lackluster. And part of the reason of that is because their offensive line has been hurt. They've had some players, you know, in and out of that offensive line. Uh, part of it is just uh, um, has been also, you know, a little inconsistency from Shady so far this season. You know, really dancing around a little too much, I think. Um, you know, instead of hitting the hole, the holes that are there to, to, to hit. Um, and look, he's an all-pro running back, and, and do I expect this to be the way this season's going to go uh, for him the whole year? I, I really don't. We saw glimpses of, of, you know, what he's done in the past, um, certainly in the Giants game. There's been some other games, you know, e even last week. I mean, last week he rushed for nearly 100 yards against a really good um, run defense. Uh, so we know that it's, it's still there. It's just, I, I don't know if he's just a little... He's still, you know, um, cautious because of the offensive line. He doesn't believe in the holes as much as he does when, when they got all their guys there. <clears throat> I really don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I really don't know. Um, but uh, it, it has been an issue. It's certainly been an issue in the red zone uh, where the Eagles have um, have not fared too well. They have not scored a lot of touchdowns. Nick Foles has, 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 has you know, uh, had some turnovers in the red zone with some interceptions um, so far this season, and it, 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 it's been a mess. It's been a mess. It's, it, it's cost them two games, basically. It cost them the 49er game and the Arizona game. You definitely want to see them do better in the red zone when they get their chances um, going forward. Uh, defensively, the Eagles have played better uh, the last few weeks. I know they gave us some big plays to the Cardinals, but really, besides the big, you know, touchdown run by Larry Fitzgerald and and the other touchdown, oh, excuse me again, touchdown again uh, late in the game that really was the game winner to to, um, to John Brown at, at, towards the end of that game. Um, the Eagles defense played pretty good. Uh, they got one turnover. You know, they weren't able to, to get uh, any interceptions, but they caused and recovered a fumble. Nate Allen uh, on the sideline there, a nice play against, I believe it was Ellington. Um, and, you know, and, and they've they've played better. I mean, they gave up, you know, 24 points last week. I mean, you know, the way this offense should be, that should be a win just about every week. You give up 24 points, uh, particularly on the road. You give up only 24 points and lose. Um Special teams still has been one of the strengths of the team. Uh, the, the return game has been good. Now, obviously, they will be getting Darren Sproles back this week, which is a big, big plus for them. Uh, the coverage units have been awesome. I mean, Parkey has been has been a godsend, basically. You know, kicking the ball out of bounds every every uh, every kickoff, and the punts. Of course, the punt uh, punts by um, by Jones has, has still been good, and, and the coverage units have been really good too. Special teams has been 
really one of the great strengths of the team so far. And field position is a big deal. You know, you, you take a look at wins and losses for teams, and a lot of it's due to field position. So the Eagles have done a really good job. One of the reasons that they have the record they do is because they have gotten good field, field position. They've also limited the opponents to their field position. Um, all this being said, let's focus on the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans are a a better team this season than people you know thought they would be. Of course, they have a new head coach, and they are they're you know I mean they they've they've uh, they they struggled at times and they've also played well at times. And one of the reasons why they are four and four, why they are five hundred, is is because, you know, we took a look at the Eagles struggling with the running game. The Texans are really good with the running game. The, 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 the Texans' uh, star running back, Arian Foster, has kind of refound himself this season. Now, he's, he, he had a couple injury plague seasons, kind of fell off a little bit the last few years, but this year he's really, really been their most dynamic weapon on offense. He has been back to the Aryan Nation days of years gone by. Really tough running back um, to stop. The Eagles have done a pretty good job against the run. They had some trouble against San Francisco. Frank Gore, you know, broke some runs on them. Um, but Houston, this is going to be one of the first real big tests for the Eagles' defense against the run. Um, you take a look at their quarterback and Fitzpatrick. I mean, the bearded wonder, and I have a little something going here, really more for my Halloween costume last night. Uh, but... But, you know, talk about beards. I mean, he has probably the beard. <laughs> he certainly has the, the best beard of any quarterback in the league. And uh, I believe it was Kiesel on, on the Steelers has that big beard going. But um, certainly the bearded wonder, uh, Fitzpatrick. Now, you're, you're not going to be overly concerned about Fitzpatrick. But the thing is, you know, the Eagles defense, the secondary, uh, aside from Jenkins, has had their problems so far this season. I mean, they gave up the best game of the year to uh, Kirk Cousins, and Kirk Cousins is now, you know, back up again for the Redskins. Uh, really hasn't ha didn't do anything after that game against the Eagles. So I'm not going to go into this game saying, oh, we don't have to worry about Fitzpatrick. Ah, who's he, Mr. Beardo? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see, the, the, the Amish rifle, I think his nickname is. But, um, you, know, uh, you know, Beardo could still... Uh, could still get some get get some yards against the Eagles secondary. The other thing about the Texans is their receivers are pretty decent. I mean DeAndre Hopkins, and of course uh, you know Andre Johnson. Now Andre Johnson, he is kind of long in the tooth. You know he's been in the league a long time. He's Mr. Texan. You know certainly on offense uh, for many years. He's been uh, 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 you know one of their offensive captains, and he's been one of the longest tenured Houston Texans, if not the longest tenured Houston Texan, I believe. But um, he's still a danger. You know, he's, he's a big-bodied receiver. He can still go up and get the ball. And, you know, one of the problems the Eagles have had in their secondary, particularly at cornerback, has been covering the receiver, making plays on the ball when it when it's in the air. Instead of looking for the ball, kind of looking at the receiver. Want to get away from that. Uh, Hopkins is, is a danger, too. He's a good receiver, young receiver. Uh, I believe his second year in the league now, I believe. And, uh, of course, you know, the ageless Andre Johnson. And, uh, you know, if <clears throat> if you give any quarterback time in the league, they're going to hurt you. And last week, one of the Eagles' problems, now, now they did get to uh, Carson Palmer. They hurried him a bunch. They knocked him down a few times. But they only had, I think, one sack. And uh, Palmer's one of those, po you know, pocket passers, you know, kind of statuesque type passers. It's the same with Fitzpatrick. Not a guy that's going to burn you with his feet. But he certainly has a strong arm. Now, is he the most accurate? No, he, he does turn the ball over. He throws his share of interceptions, but so does Nick Foles. But um, I do believe the Eagles, one of the keys for this game is to definitely get a lot of pressure on Fitzpatrick. Make him, you know, do what what Fitzpatrick has done so far this season. Throw those interceptions. Uh, you know, stop drives. Uh, Arian Foster is definitely going to be a big concern. He's a big, he's their big weapon. If the Eagles can control their running game and make the Texans kind of, you know, become more of a passing in more passing situations, if the Eagles can get a big lead, make the Texans more kind of one-dimensional with the pass, more advantage for the Eagles. Now, easier said than done, and I certainly believe that. I mean, Arian Foster, hey, look, he's going to be an all-pro 
running back this season. He's having a great year. People who have him on their, on their fantasy teams are loving life right now. <laughs> I actually lost to a guy who had Arian Foster on their team last week. Um, so he's, he's a threat. The other thing about Arian, Arian Foster, he's a good receiving back too. Uh, so you want to be careful with that for the Eagles defense. Uh, one of the, the things the Eagles defense has done a pretty good job with this season. Now, last week they only got the one sack, but they've definitely gotten their pressure, their share of pressure on the opposing quarterback. Right, Eli? <laughs> uh, the Eagles defense, uh, defensive front, the front four has done really good. They've really uh, played well. They've done good. They've been stout against the run, and they've been getting pressure on the quarterback. Connor Barwin, I believe, should be an all pro selection this year so far. He's playing great, lights out football. When you talk about defense, though, you look at the other end of the ball, and you look at number 99, J.J. Watt. Yeah, he's going to be a handful. Uh, the Eagles' offensive line, even with the injuries that they've had, played pretty good. I mean, uh, Nick Foles has been one of the least sacked quarterbacks in the league uh, statistically so far this season. Now, this week is, is, is again, this is one of their first big tests because they are going up against the defensive monsters, being Halloween, the defensive monster there in J.J. Watt. And I believe uh, uh, Clowney is coming back from injury on the other side for the Texans, so that's going to help things out for them. Their defensive line is pretty good. It's not just J.J. Watt. They've all played pretty good. Um, they get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Uh, they've been pretty good against the against the run. I guess the pass, though, they're, they're not very good. But then again, neither were the Cardinals, and the Eagles still turned the ball over a few times last week um, and, and, and stopped drives. That's another key for this game. And I said this last week, and I had to eat my words because Nick Foles turned the ball over twice. The other uh, turnover was by a fumble, um, and but you know, the Eagles receiver there fumbled the ball. I'm just uh, completely blanking on his name right now. The rookie out of Oregon. Um, I apologize about that, but um, fumble the ball. That, that was in the red zone. Foles throws a, a red zone interception or uh, uh, yeah interception. And, uh, yeah, red zone intercept. Just too many turnovers. Too many turnovers last week. And you look, take a look at the 24-20 loss, and one of the reasons was because of the turnovers. Uh, Nick Foles has got to do a better job. The Eagles offense has to do a better job at holding on to the ball, at not turning it over, not giving the ball back to the Texans, um, you know, stopping themselves, stopping drives, particularly on the road. You know, um, it's just it's hard enough to win on the road as it is, but when you're turning the ball over, you know, like they did three times last week, it, it just makes it even more difficult. And um, the Eagles have got to do a better job, have got to do a better job securing the ball, keeping possessions. The Texas, there, there are... There, there are a lot of areas to exploit against the Texans secondary, as there was a week ago with the with the Cardinals secondary, in, in particular after Peterson got hurt and was out for the game with the con concussion symptoms. Um, there are going to be plays to be made. Now, that being said, you want to look out for number 99, <laughs> Mr. J.J. Watt, because he's definitely an uh, offensive disrupt disruptor. You know, he just comes in there, he gets sacks, he gets interceptions, he causes fumbles. He just does it all. He's probably going to be this year's defensive player of the year, and rightfully so. He's had a great season, and he scores a lot of touchdowns too. <laughs> so uh, so one of the biggest keys for this game for the Eagles um, is to not make those mental mistakes, is to not have the turnovers. You want to limit those turnovers, and you definitely, definitely, Eagles, you definitely have to – um, take advantage of, this, of, of your of your opportunities when you get in the red zone, and 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 not settle for threes. Let's get six, you know, extra points, make it sevens, you know, on those drives. Again, if you get a pretty decent sized lead against the Texans, that negates Arian Foster. That kind of gets them out of the running game, and now now it's all up to the bearded man <laughs> to beat you, and he does throw his interceptions. So. Uh, one of the big keys for this game, I would say, would be the Eagles to get a decent-sized lead, like a 14, 20-point lead, where the Texans don't ha you know, have to kind of get out of their comfort zone, get out of running the ball, go back to throwing the ball, and uh, you know, maybe, you get some maybe you get some turnovers there. Maybe uh, Fitzpatrick throws a few to the Eagles' defense. And uh, the Eagles' defense so far this season did a pretty good job. I know they only got one turnover last week. They've got a pretty good job at getting turnovers and uh, causing that pressure and havoc 
against the opposing offenses. So hopefully, uh, you know, they can do that, uh, you know, tomorrow against Fitzpatrick, make it all the more easier to get to get the W. For the game itself, I, I do think it's going to be a close game. And, and honestly speaking, and I, I don't want this to sound like a cop-out here, but I, I, I mean, this game can go either way. The way the Eagles played last week, particularly on offense, if they do that again this week, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for them to get a win. But if they can kind of shore up some of those things that that they had problems with last week, the turnovers in the red zone for one, uh, they are also getting, like I said uh, earlier, they're getting Darren Sproles back. They're also getting Kelsey back this week. Uh, I know Harriman's has like a torn bicep issue, but he's still going to play. Uh, But we'll have to keep an eye on that. One of the big matchups is going to be the Eagles' offensive line against J.J. Watt, particularly when he's going up against uh, um, against Peters because Peters has been really the rock. He has been one of their best offensive linemen for a number of years. And this year he, you know, all but being kicked out uh, partially for that in that, in that Redskins game, part, he missed part, missed part of the uh, Redskins game uh, some weeks ago. Um he has been one of their most uh, steady linemen. Now, last week he had some he had some penalties. Now, you know that officiating crew again last week was just god awful and just nah. But he had three penalties last week, and 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 that's something that he's kind of um, shored up since being here. You know, at first when he was here, he would get penalties. Kind of they've they've gone down since. Um, uh, you know, and, and it's been good to see. He's been a he's been a a great uh, a, a great uh, anchor on that offensive line, an All Pro selection. Um, you know, and he he's been you know he's been really 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 good. And you know, Jason Peters, of course, I'm I'm speaking of, and uh, he's gonna have he's gonna have his hands full like the rest of them will against um, against JJ Watt. But hopefully. Um, you know, so that's going to be an interesting matchup to watch in itself when Watts lined up with with Peters. Kind of see that battle there, and uh, you know, it, it, it should be it should be it should be fun watching if you if you're into uh, line play in the NFL watching uh, watching that. So, anyhow, I, I for prediction for the game. You know, like I said, this thing can go either way. I do think it's going to be close. I think whoever wins the game is going to be like one of those last minute field goal type things. But I will say this, if the Eagles can um, limit the turnovers, don't do what they did last week. If they can have kind of more of a clean game, I mean, they can run away with this thing. Uh, because the Texans, they are 4-4, four and four, they are at home, but um, they're, you know, this is a game where the Eagles could win by double digits. But uh, obviously, if they're turning the ball over, that that's not going to that's probably not going to happen. But uh, all in all, I'm calling for a very close game, a last-second field goal type game. Um, I'm I'm going to say the Eagles are going to win the game because you know coming off a loss, they've they've done pretty good over, over in recent years in the Chip Kelly era, and I do believe that they can they can get this win and uh, get the six and two. So I'm calling for a close Eagles win, and uh, I will see you on game day. That's the next segment. It's game day. Week 9, Eagles against the Houston Texans. Just put all the Halloween stuff away. You know what's not fair? It takes me about a few weeks to put it all up, and I have to take it all down in, like, two days. <laughs> but at least it got done again for another year. I can't imagine working at one of those Halloween attraction places, the haunted attractions, where, my goodness, the cleanups there must be just crazy. But anyhow, it is game day. Hopefully the Eagles can get a win against the Houston Texans. The... J.J. Watt-led defense of the Houston Texans and uh, should be a good game. I think it'll probably be a close game, and I'm hoping for a win because I don't want to go through another week of, you know, an a- analyzing over, you know, the players and the coaches and, you know, you know, going back and forth, you know, being the typical, you know, uh, Monday morning quarterback, as it were. And uh, I'm really hoping for a win. You know, it's always better when the Eagles win. You know, when they when they win, it's always better. <laughs> so I'm hoping for a win today. I'm calling for a close win, maybe a last-second Cody Parkey field goal gets the uh, gets the win in Houston. And uh, Eagles hopefully can get to 6-2 uh, and two going 
uh, home next Monday night against the Carolina Panthers. But anyhow, it's a game day. It's about an hour away now. Looking forward to it. Just did all the Halloween cleanup. So now just looking forward to watching the game. And I will see you after the game with the post-game comments. Well, you'll see me in the full video, you know, with the magic of editing. But anyhow, next segment will be post-game. Hopefully we'll be talking about an Eagles win. Hopefully I'll have my light-up hat on at that time. All right, we will see what happens. Go Eagles! Touchdown reception. A seven-play, 88-yard drive. Eagles started back at their 12. 88 yards, 239. Typical Eagles fashion. All right. <laughs> Eagles win 31-21. That means I get to ring the wind chimes, as I do after every win. And, of course... It also means I get to turn on the hat. Six and two. Great win today by the Eagles. Well, as you saw at the end uh, there and, and, and by the um, highlights of the game, the Eagles were able to win uh, this past Sunday afternoon at Houston. 31-21 the final. Uh, Eagles improved to 6-2 and two on the season. Uh, but it comes at a cost because they lose some, uh, you know, uh, key key players. Um, I think the biggest being D'Amico Ryan's starting male linebacker. Um, you know, really the quarterback of the defense. And, speaking of quarterbacks, the Eagles' starting quarterback is now going to miss possibly the rest of the season in Nick Foles. They also lose Todd Harriman's injury. Um... You know, so it's the win certainly came at a, at a cost for the Eagles. And uh, the good news, though, is that uh, in relief of the injured Foles, uh, Mark Sanchez played really well, or pretty well, I should say, uh, through a couple of interceptions. Some weren't really his fault. Um, the uh, the play to the one that was intended for Josh Huff, it was a bit of a high pass, but uh, Huff kind of volleyballed it up in the air, and, and you never want to do that. Um, it always seems to lead to something bad, and indeed it was an interception. Uh, when Foles was in there, he threw a long touchdown to Jeremy Macklin, who's really played well. Jeremy Macklin um, has had a really, really solid season. I mean, you talk about guys who you know can make the Pro Bowl. Certainly Jeremy Macklin should be on that list. Right now he has eight touchdowns on the season. He had two of them, including the, the one that really put the game away at the end, towards the end of the fourth quarter. Um, really, really... He's played really well, and of course, the, he 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 uh, you know he was out all, all year last year, and uh, you know so he's been a key member of the offense so far. Particularly, he, he's been their best receiver so far this season. Uh, but yeah, I mean Foles out, Sanchez in. When Foles was in there, he threw a touchdown pass. He threw a bad interception, which was a pick six, and then later on in the I believe it was the first quarter, he goes down. He goes down with injury, broke his collarbone. He's going to be out uh, at most eight weeks. It's the same injury that Aaron Rodgers had last year when he missed about eight weeks, I believe, um, including that game against the Eagles uh, at Green Bay, which the Eagles won last year. While I was in India, <laughs> I missed that one. But um, anyhow, the Eagles get the win. Um, like I said, um, Ryan's, Foles, Herman's out. And now it's Mark Sanchez, and there's been a lot of talk on the radio this week about, you know, Mark Sanchez or Nick Foles. And there's been a lot of people debating before the injury, before this game, whether Nick Foles should be, is the guy. Is he the guy? I mean, you know, I throw out the 27-2 to last year, touchdown interception ratio. That's just one of those things that you're, you're just not going to see um, all that often. And... Um, Apple side. <laughs> one of the fall treats. But anyhow, you're not going to see that often. I mean, that's just one of those remarkable uh, seasons. And he really didn't even start the whole season last year, but came in for the injured Mike Vick and really took over from that point on to the point where Mike Vick is now with the Jets. So speaking of the, the Jets, interestingly enough, Mike Vick goes there. Sanchez comes here, and now he's the guy. He's the quarterback, the starting quarterback for – foreseeably the rest of the regular season at least and possibly forward. I mean, there's a lot of talk that, hey, if the Eagles continue to win with Mark Sanchez, will they continue to go with Mark Sanchez even when Foles returns? 
And that's a you know that's going to be decided, I guess, uh, around playoff time. Of course, the Eagles have to make it, but uh, that's certainly a decision for 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 that for, for them. I believe that. Um, so phone just turned off. I believe that um, in the Chip Kelly offense, it could be. It, 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 it could be Sanchez. It could be Sanchez. That's the guy. He's a veteran quarterback. He's he's played, you know, uh, many seasons under a defensive-minded coach. And now, in, of course, uh, Rex Ryan with the Jets. And now he comes to the Eagles, which is more of an offensive-minded coach. And I think that could certainly benefit him. Now, he's only here for this season. And then it's basically a one-year deal. The Eagles game in the offseason. Kind of late into the offseason, they signed him uh, just before, you know, uh, training camp and uh, – preseason and all that started but uh i believe that uh he could be the guy um at least for 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 the rest of the season nick Foles really has been struggling and nick Foles has just not made good decisions he's held on to the ball way too long he's you know he he's late on some of his deliveries he's overthrown receivers he just hasn't been the same quarter and not that i expect the 27 and 2 this season but i wanted to see him continue to progress into this offense and really, I feel, and, and most Eagle fans do, and most people who watch football feel that he's taken a step backwards this season, going into this injury, and now you have Mark Sanchez. Now, Mark Sanchez played pretty good, and I understand the Texans had a lot of injuries on defense, too. Uh, Clowney did not play in that game, um, as I, I thought he would, as it was rumored that he might play that game. He didn't. And the Texans also lost their two starting cornerbacks during the game, cornerbacks uh, during the game. Certainly advantage Eagles offense there. Um, but, you know, for, for a guy coming in, his first, you know, snaps of the regular season, he played a bit in the preseason, looked pretty good in preseason. I thought Mark, Mark Sanchez play, play, played pretty good. I can't get the words out for some reason. I believe that he played a very good game, a solid game. Threw a couple of interceptions, but he threw some really nice touchdowns. The first touchdown to Jordan Matthews was a really nice touch throw. And, of course, the one to really ice the game away towards the end there to uh, Jeremy Macklin. Nice, two nice passes there. The other thing about the Eagles in this game, and and as they've you know started the you know as they're getting these pieces back on the offensive line, unfortunately they lose Todd Harriman's, but they got um, uh, Kelsey back at center, and they're going to get Mathis back this week, this Monday night against the Panthers. So they're getting two big pieces back, and Kelsey has been one of the, you know he he's 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 the best center in the game right now, and without him and Mathis on the offensive line, you saw the short yardage having problems. You saw them having trouble. The two losses were because they couldn't, you know, convert on a short yard situation in San Francisco and in Arizona. Well, now they get Kelsey back. They get Mathis back. Fortunately, Harriman's is out. But uh, Tobin, I believe, will continue to do a good job there, whoever they put in there. They at least have had experience this season. The guys who are going to be – whoever takes it over for, for Harriman's, at least with the injuries, they've had experience in this season. And I believe that it is a big loss with Harriman's, but I still believe that with the uh, – uh, you know, getting Kelsey, getting Mathis back, it certainly helps. Uh, you just saw the difference in that game. The Texans, even with the injuries, are pretty good against the run, and the Eagles ran all over them in the second half. Uh, the, the Eagles, interestingly enough, I hearken back to many years ago when the Eagles, believe it or not, everybody points to the 2005, 2004, 2005 season where, where, where when T.O. was first here and they had that, that incredible offensive season that year. But realistically, their best statistical offensive season in the, in the Andy Reid era was when they had the three-headed monster at running back, when they had Carell Bockhalter, of course, Deuce Staley, who's now the running back's coach, and a rookie at the time out of Villanova named Brian Westbrook, they had a three-headed monster at running back, the, the hydra of running backs, and they had their best statistical season offensively. Yards, points, they actually d scored more points that season than they did with when, when T.O. Was, was, was his first year here when they just were like a you know shot out of a cannon that year in the offense. Uh, believe it or not, and and I have to actually, you know, I I believe I did hear that right some years ago, but I, you know, I'd have to probably look back just to make sure. Um, but that was their best statistical offensive season. Now that year they lost, I believe that was the year they lost to the Panthers in the NFC title game. But that was, you know, they 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 were able to run the ball. They had this incredible rushing offense that season. Of course, they had Donovan McNabb at quarterback. 
uh, for part, some of that season. I think that year also, that was the year where, I be, or maybe it was the year before when A.J. Philly was filled in for Donovan when he got hurt. But um, anyhow, uh, that's neither here nor there. But the, the bottom line is that year they had a great running attack. This year, going back to this game, it was kind of a harken back to that because Shady McCoy over 100 yards rushing in the game to do his uh, third straight week doing that, th third straight game, I should say, doing that. Um, you saw you saw um, Darren Sproles return, big, you know, big return there on the offense, getting him back. And you also saw um, Chris Polk. And Chris Polk isn't a very big guy, but he runs like a big guy. <laughs> He's kind of the hammer, you know. Um, so they had that three-headed attack. Now the thing about Darren Sproles is you don't have to, you can't just worry about him running; is it, receiving too. Same with Shady, um, and and Polk is like that hammer back, you know. So what happened this week when they got Kelsey back at, at center? They were able to convert on those on those short yard situations, the fourth and short that Chip went for twice. I thought Chip Kelly's play calling was 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 great this week. Um, and you also saw when Sanchez came in, the Eagles did, you know, they, they had some drives where they just ran the ball. The one drive um, led to a Chris Polk touchdown. They handed the ball four straight times. And they went right down the field and scored a touchdown. And that's old school. You know, that's just old school football. That's, you know, taking care of, you know, managing the clock, you know, with a lead. And uh, just you know, playing solid defense and running the ball. I mean, that's the 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 success of many teams who have won you know championships. I look at the Steelers. I look at what Seattle did last year. Now, I'm not saying the Eagles are to that level, but you see when teams have success when they've won championships, they were able to control the clock. They were able to run the ball really well, and they had stout defenses. So, kind of rambling here, but the three-headed monster at running back seems to be back. And with Sanchez now at the quarterback, I do believe that Chip Kelly's going to kind of lean on the running game a little more going forward. And he has Shady, and he has Sproles, and he has Polk, and he has those pieces coming back on the offensive line, Sans Harriman's, but they do have a great, still a great offensive line that can create holes, and you have backs that each brings something different to the table, kind of like it was when it was Staley, Buckhalter, and Westbrook. Now it's Shady, Sproles, and Polk. It's the same kind of situation. Each of them brings something different to the table, and you have to defend them all a little differently. So I think advantage Eagles there, and I really look forward to seeing how they go forward running the ball. I'm a big fan of running backs. That's my favorite position in football. I love the running game. Yes, the passing game is fun to watch, and, you know, it's kind of the sexy thing. But uh, you know, there, it's just there's just nothing better than than watching a team that's able to dominate the line of scrimmage, run the ball real well, and uh, you know win and and have a lot of success. So Foles out for the rest of the season looks like Sanchez in, and he played pretty good. You know, he he's a little more mobile than than Sproles. The last touchdown he you know he rolled out and threw, you know, um, to to Macklin. So I do look forward to seeing how this offense kind of morphs a little bit <laughs> with. With the uh, with, with the fact that Mark Sanchez is not a quarterback. Now, it's not to say that Mark Sanchez can't beat you with his arm, because I think that you know, and, and people have talked about this. We had you know on Sports Talk Radio this week, there were people calling in from New York, and obviously that's where Sanchez played his whole career up to this point. People were saying, you know, Sanchez never was given a fair shake uh, with Rex Ryan and that that offense because Rex is is not really an offensive you know mastermind, and they never had the weapons you know, around Sanchez to, for him to have success. Now, that's according to people who watch the Jets. That's according to, and even a Giants fan called in and said the Eagles are going to, he felt the Eagles are going to go to the Super Bowl now. That's how highly he thought of Mark Sanchez. Now, obviously, you know what, that that's that's couch quarterbacking, right? That's kind of looking at a situation, from you know, and, and saying this is what it could be. Uh, I do believe that Chip Kelly is going to be really good for Mark Sanchez. I believe that Sanchez still can be an effective quarterback in the NFL. And I know he's known for the butt fumble and for, you know, throwing, you know, how many, you know, 70 touchdowns, 71 interceptions. But you look back to the Jets situation, that was not a very good offensive situation. And towards the end, they had a lot of holes in the offensive line. They really didn't have any receiving threats. The running back situation was a bit of a mess, so he he wasn't really put in an, in a good situation those last few years with the Jets. You go to the Eagles, well now hey we got a running game, we got a great offensive line, you have receiving threats, 
You know, um, so I do think he'll benefit from that. Now, I'm not saying he's going to light the world on fire and, you know, be like Kurt Warner <laughs> when uh, Trent Green went down, um, you know, those many years ago in the greatest show on turf days, um, or even in a situation like it was with Bledsoe and Brady. You know, I, I don't think it's going to be like that, but I do think that he'll benefit from the Chip Kelly offense, and I do believe that, you know, they'll, they'll have success. I think this is a situation that's kind of different. Usually when your starting quarterback goes down, it's like, oh, God, the season's over, you know? Same as for those other instances that I just mentioned. But in this situation with a good offensive coach, as Chip Kelly, with a good running game, with a strong offensive line and weapons around him, I believe this is a good situation where you have a veteran quarterback who's, you know, who's been in AFC title games, who's been in the playoffs, who, who – um, has kind of been through the the gamut of emotions as an NFL quarterback, but certainly have, you know, has had situations. You know, comes in here, gets to start. You know, maybe they they morph the offense a little bit. Maybe there's a little more run involved. Um, and uh, I, I do believe he'll benefit from it. I believe the team will benefit from it. The one thing I also noticed about Sanchez, he gets rid of the ball, and Nick Foles would just be there holding on to the ball. And, and again, look, I, I'm not you know I'm not hating on Nick Foles. I'm not. But, you know, going through this season and seeing some of the mistakes that were constantly made with him holding onto the ball too long or getting rid of it in bad situations, like the interception, this, the pick six this past weekend, and then you see Sanchez, who's more of a, you know, deci- decisive, you know, decisive, uh, you know, with his, with his throwing and, and with, his, with his reads, uh, I believe that could help this offense too. I'd like to see the tight ends get more involved, and I'd like to see Josh Huff get a little more involved too. I know he's made some mistakes, <laughs> you know, but he's a speedy receiver. He seems to, you know, get through tackles, make the catch and go. Uh, Riley Cooper has been a it, – it's really been a, a, a very disappointing season for him. Um, you know, he's like a number two receiver, and, and he just he just hasn't done a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot this season. So now you look at – now maybe that changes. Maybe Maybe he does get better. I don't know. But I just can go with what I see week to week, and I see Huff. Even though he's made some mistakes, he's a hu- he. He just he hustles out there. You know, he's 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 getting the ball. He's looking for the first down sticks, seeing to make some plays. And he's a rookie. I mean, he, he you got to learn, right? He's a rookie, and I do think he'll get he'll get better as he gets if he gets more reps and, and, and chances. I also like what I'm seeing out of Jordan Matthews, another rookie. Uh, that touchdown, great touchdown grab by him. I believe that's his third touchdown on the season. He's played really well um, when given the opportunities. And, of course, Macklin. I'd also like to see the tight ends used a little more. Uh, I understand they were in blocking a lot because they've had some injuries on the offensive line. But now when they get guys back from the offensive line, I'd like to see the tight ends get a little more involved, particularly Zach Ertz. I think Zach Ertz can be a big playmaker in this in this offense. So all that being said, I know I've rambled on again. But uh, great win for the Eagles on Sunday. Go to 6-2. and two. Dallas loses again. How's it going, Dallas fans? <laughs> I bet they wish they had Sanchez instead of Wheaton those games, at least last week. But, um, but anyhow, yeah, so the Eagles are back in first place in the NFC East. And uh, a game ahead of Dallas. This week coming up, of course, as I mentioned before, they're playing Monday night against the Carolina Panthers. And I'll get into that game as Week 10 moves along into Season of the Fan. But uh, as said before, great win by the, by the Eagles. A lot of adversity they overcame. Starting quarterback goes down. Backup comes in plays well. They also lose their starting middle linebacker. I'll get more into that next week. That's going to be a big blow on this defense. But, um, but we will get more into that next week as we preview the game against the Panthers. So anyhow, big win for the Eagles. I got my Flyers shirt on right now because they're playing tonight. But anyhow, big win for the Eagles. I was able to turn on the light-up hat, as you saw at the end, and uh, ring the wind chimes that I ring every time the Eagles win. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to ring them again next Monday night. We moved to week 10, believe it or not. Boy, this season's just flying by. But week 10, Eagles hosting the Carolina Panthers. We'll get into that game and that's in that video, but for now, great win for the Eagles. Six and two, they beat the Texans again the final 31-21, and uh, some change. <laughs> so, you know, coming up at, at the starting quarterback position and a middle linebacker, and, and we'll get more into that as week 10 comes in. So anyhow, great win for my birds, and uh, as always, go Eagles, and I'll see you in week 10. All right, everyone, take care. See you. Go Birds!